Welcome back. Another wonderful, I've got my eyes wide open, Wednesday. Oh, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> uh, let us... <laughs> I'm so lost now. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, I'm here with my beautiful wife, Miss Kelsey. Mrs., I guess, would be the right term. But uh, yeah, we're here to break down Sunday's uh, insane... Different message. That was wild. Um, but uh, do you want to do the announcements or do you want me to do it? I'll do the announcements. Let's do the announcements. Well, let's, okay. While we're getting going, drop where you're watching from. Let us know what you're are having you for dinner. I'm <laughs> yeah. making make sure my eyes are open. I was told my eyes weren't open. I think it's... Never mind. Uh, okay. September... Hey, Brooke. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> September events. We have... Um, Next Thursday, I forgot what day it was. It was Wednesday. Dining with Dignity, 5.30. Um, if you're interested in serving with that, we can give you the email. I think that I put the email for Kathy on the Is newsletter. It on the website? Or the no, newsletter? I think it up, I put it on the newsletter every single month. If you don't get the newsletter, um, I think you have to be signed up with Subsplash or at least have the app, Right. For the newsletter? Yeah. Yeah, the app. You have to have the app. If you're not getting our newsletter, that's because you haven't gotten our app and signed up. Um, so if you're wanting to catch up on the announcements, familychurch.social slash events. And also on our website, obviously, um, that's the easiest way to find our app. If you just go to familychurch.social and scroll down a little bit, halfway down the homepage, there's a button there for whatever platform you're on. You just click it, and it'll take you to either the Apple Store or the Google Store. Um, kind of still working on the TV app, but they told me some stuff that we would have to change uh, with the branding and <laughs> the name. So I, I didn't want, <laughs> I didn't really want to do that. But um, yeah, that's how you get our our uh, events. Yes. Um, okay. And then the women's small group that your mom is doing is starting uh, the tenth at six thirty. That's the Gospel of John. And I usually always put the link where, like, in the event page, the link on what book to order. But I'll make a little thing and put out which book to order. Um, sorry, we just left. Yeah, we, <laughs> we ran here from soccer. softball. So, or so softball, I'm soccer. like not, my head's Sweaty. not. Sweaty. Um, women's Fellowship uh, is starting on the 12th. That's at 630. That's starting back up every Thursday. I haven't gotten an email from Lauren yet, so I hope she said she was starting in September. So yeah, I'm sure. I'm hoping. They are. Um, the 15th is Family Fall Potluck, and we're also going to celebrate your year anniversary of preaching on that day. That's news to me. It's in the group text. I don't read that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. No, and then I don't on remember. the 15th, the Fire Youth is still going every Sunday night, but he's doing, Duel's doing like once a month really cool special events that's different from your normal Sunday night stuff. So the 15th is Fire Youth Ultimate Frisbee from 6 to 8 p.m. So same time, but he's just doing You're, go ahead. the event. A, a different thing. Okay. New visitors class on the 22nd. If you're new, that's following service. And then the 27th is bring a board family night that's come with a board game and the charcuterie. I don't get it. Charcuter charcuterie? <laughs> I think it's charcuterie. I don't know. Whatever. Um, cheese it doesn't have to be like mean cheese. There were some really cool ideas on Google that was like a dessert one and there was like a candy one and there was a lot of different uh, boards. Food. Yeah. On a board. Um Family room's going to be at 6.30 until November because yep. of Mila's soccer. So sorry yes, about that, guys. Yes, if you're missing that. Uh, it was somebody, kind of a last-minute decision today. Yeah, yeah it was a last-minute decision sorry. today. Um, my, my daughter, um, oldest daughter, started soccer. Wednesday is practice. It gets done at 6. So until November or whatever, at least November, yeah. we will be starting the family room at 6.30 instead of 6. Uh, if somebody can put that... In the chat, just so whoever comes late will know. Uh, that'd be great. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Um, also, softball's almost ready to get... I've been talking back and forth. I guess the county, no matter what field you go on, the county has to... You have to literally get a permit to use the softball field. Of course. You can't just show up and play, which makes sense because if someone's... You know, you want to be guaranteed you're going to have the field if you're getting a large group of people together. So... Um, 
I'm aiming for Treaty is completely slammed unless we want to play Sunday night, which there's a couple youth like Duel that are interested in playing, so that yeah. would cut them off. So I don't I wouldn't, really want to do that. You want to um, and I'm also sick, so I'm really trying not to sniffle into the microphone. <laughs> uh, so a really great field would be where Carolyn plays softball. It's the St. Augustine Little League field. Um, they maintain it really, really well. Um, it would be really great for us. That's the one to behind use. Osceola. Yeah, so it's just a couple miles down the road from yeah. us, so it's really not far away. Um, he said Sunday's wide open for that, so we could almost come. I put Whenever. the permit in today. Um, we could go at one o'clock, one to three, use it for two hours. It'd be a really great fellowship for people after church. If they want to come hang out, we can do hot dogs, and it would just be like an extended Sunday. Yeah. You can preach some more. <laughs> we can let like, if we get tied up in here, we can no. just go to the softball field. Um, and then last thing is a couple of the girls and I were talking about uh, doing a women's fam group that's like your dad's group, mm. um, where good. it's a little bit different than the women's fellowship and it's different than like the women's small Bible studies because we won't really be doing a lot of Bible study. It's more of like a, a fam group. It's mm -hmm. going to be like doing stuff like, the axe throwing, we yeah. can bring that. The girls want to do that. I don't have they any wanna... <laughs> desire to throw an axe. I don't want to kill anybody because I probably would. But um, <coughs> stuff like that. And, uh, you know, maybe do a testimony or two and then just eat. Our food will be better than yours. Um... <laughs> well, wow. Anyways. Shots fired. So uh, we're going to try to start getting that together. I don't Perfect. know when, but... Um, I'm all about it. I'm all for more uh, small groups popping up. I'd love to see just a whole bunch. That's the way that any church, you make it feel like a small church. Oh, and hashtag bring Wendy on bass. I'm going to start that up. Let everyone know. Oh, Brooke's mom plays like, bass, what? and I'm trying to get her on the stage to play bass. So uh, hashtag Wendy on the bass. Since y'all pressured me to get on the couch, now I'm going to pressure someone else to do something. <laughs> do something. Okay. Like right. somebody yelled that. Well, that's all the announcements. Again, if uh, you're arriving late, I know Kathy Murray is uh, over there on YouTube. Again, from now until November, maybe even more, uh, we will be doing the family room at 6.30 instead of 6 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time for anybody that's watching uh, wherever else that's not in our time zone. But... Mm -hmm. The goal of tonight, and not to take up too much time after I did plenty of that on Sunday, uh, is to talk about week one of the new series, Committed. Week one was Renewal. Uh, we were kind wild. of, huh? <laughs> it was wild. It was wild. It was wild. I had. You made I've, me clinch a couple times. You're like, I have, getting um, smashed. I'm like, <laughs> hey. oh no, I'm in the sound. I know, and I was talking with dad about this. I'm oh, sorry. I know some people's, um, no, that's a minute and a half behind. Oh. There's a delay. That's why it doesn't buffer. Um, uh, I know. Ace throwing. Ace throwing. I know the, uh, sometimes the language is a little too real, but to me, uh, without going over the top and being crass, um, you know, we're, we're dealing with real it's life issues. Say balls. At, well, you just said it there. <laughs> um, that's great. But, uh, we're dealing with real issues and it's like, you know, people, we come to church and we want to like clean everything up and be all this perfect thing. It's like, as soon as you step foot back outside of the doors, it's, you're back into your mess. You're back into your hell. The enemy's coming against you. I mean, everything out there is, uh, just, well, I mean, I it's a it. messy and a disaster. A well, yeah, model. you want to be, be up there saying, well, that's what I just said. Okay, sorry. You don't want to be crass, but I'm still going to speak to the people in a realistic language. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm some perfect person. I mean, I'm not going to go over the top with things, mm -hmm. but I'm still going to speak my language. I'm still going to speak the language, the same stuff. That's what he was laughing at, because somebody will get upset if you use, you know, whatever word, and then they'll go out there and they'll be cussing before they even get out of the, uh, the parking lot. But the um, Sunday was week one of Committed. Um, well, and first, what gave you this idea? What gave me an idea? Okay, so, and I think I said it Sunday. I had started wanting to preach, uh, and this was before the, the um, locked in, lifted out sermon with the Daniel and the lion's den. I was, God had already led me to Second Chronicles 20, and 
I don't remember what happened when I was gearing up to preach that weekend, but it just felt like the, that wasn't that wasn't the time to go there. Like it was one of those. I've talked with with Dad about it before. Just one of those. You're studying and you're going to write it, and it's just like you feel like a brick wall, and it's just you can tell God's telling you like this this isn't the direction I want you to go in. So if you're stupid or arrogant, you'll try to just keep forcing through that and try to make your sermon happen instead of what God wants to speak to the people. Mm-hmm. And um, so he led me to the Daniel thing, and then I felt led back to this. And as I was studying it, uh, the first verse in chapter 20, which is where we will end the series, uh, the first verse says, after this. So obviously, if you are wanting to really study the Bible and get to know Jesus more, one of the most important things to do is ask questions. So the first two words you see after this, you go, okay, well, after what? Let's see what after what. And I flip back, I don't know, until chapter 14, read 14, 15, and then I got to 16, and that's when things started kind of clicking where I could feel God stirring something up, and I got to 17, and that's when I felt like, okay, this this feels like uh, the launching point for where we need to go. Uh, and it all makes sense after we go through well, these weeks and get to 20. Well, I'm just asking because you, I mean, it was like, what, Thursday? You were texting me and, I mean, you were, I don't, I, th- I think it's, I'm not trying to embarrass you. No, don't. But I, was, I think it's I a lot of people here. don't realize how much time and effort, you know, some pastors, I'm, I'm going to say some because of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not using other people's notes. Anyways. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, I think that uh, people don't realize how much time and effort you put, you know, I'm in your, I'm, I'm sure your dad, you know, your mom can say your dad does the same thing, but you know, you read something and it's hard to, because you're like constantly listening to other sermons and you don't want to rip off mm-hmm. subconsciously. You don't want to rip off someone else's sermon, but It was, I didn't really realize how much until like when Brooke and I were cleaning out the closet and you were just melting down because you just couldn't really put into words what you wanted to do. Yeah. And I think, I'm not going to take the credit for that at all, but it's like, I Well, you helped me. That's why I called you in the office and you helped me just kind of sit back and take a breather and be like. Well, you wanted to do that one sermon on that and I think. I was like, you're missing, you're missing the point here. Yeah. You're not, you're missing something here. Yeah. I mean, you're not supposed to do just this. And then was it after that you decided to do a series? No, I already, I had the idea for the series, mm. but when I was sitting down to write this okay. sermon, I thought I was no, I, I had the, I had the idea for the series, but it was like, there was so much just swirling around and I was like. It's hard to explain. I, I don't know. But you guys put a lot of work into it. And yeah. I think, too, also, not just because, it, you know, you have such a passion for delivering it to everybody, but I think also people don't realize every... There's a there's a probability that every um, person that listens to sermons, if you give them the incorrect information and they know it, their trust in you delivering it appropriately yeah. and truthfully is out the window. Well, there's that side, and then there's the side and of people that don't know, down. and you're feeding them, oh, well, yeah, even if by mistake, yeah. you're feeding them something that's like, oh, you know, and, and, and if you mess it up, like, people don't realize when you are a pastor and you're teaching, like, you're teaching the Word of God, and if you do it incorrectly and you mislead people, we are going to, the pastors are going to be judged harsher on a, on a harsher level, on a harder level than just on, you know, like everyday people. I don't know how else to label that without sounding weird, but it's like we're, we're in charge of being a mouthpiece of God for, for saying what, you know, he's leading us to say. And, and if, you're, if you're misleading people mm-hmm. intentionally, I mean, that's a whole mess in itself, obviously false prophet kind of thing, but. Yeah, your dad said 20 to 30 yeah, hours I mean, of sermon. I mean. Yeah, it's it, people. I mean, if yeah, I don't. I, you've seen me and, that's just and my work sermon. ethic. That's like it's just like an extreme studying person. The, studying the studying the Bible, just yeah. needing to study it. That's just writing your. That's sermon. just the sermon. So yeah, the whole thing. Like I sat down. Um, 
and I didn't know how to put it out. I'd had all this stuff swirling around, and it was just like, how do you, how do you put yeah. what I'm feeling? It's like, I know what I'm feeling. I know an idea almost of like what needs to get said, but I don't know how to, how to voice it. And so then, you know, you helped me step back. I took a break, and then I think, I think that was Wednesday or something. But then Thursday, I sat down, and I wrote the whole thing. And usually, how I have been doing it, I would write it all out, go through it, you know, keep reading it over, studying it, trying to internalize it because I hate looking at the iPad. I mean, you hear me complain about it all the time. I hate staring at it. And then I wrote it and this was like the first one I wrote it and I just, I just stopped. Like I didn't, I did not go back and look. And I was like, something in me was like, man, just this, this, this still isn't right. And then I just, I really started feeling led. Like the Holy Spirit wants me to just step out, throw the notes away. And that's why I said Sunday, like I had a 6,000 word manuscript written out and I can't remember if I wrote these, uh, Sunday morning, I'm pretty sure is when I wrote just these notes. And, I almost, <laughs> for background on the family room, I almost almost kind of um, cheated in a way because I was like, well, I'll type out the stuff on the iPad. But I was like, no, because then if I, I feel like it would be a crutch still because I could switch back to the notes and find something. So I was like, no, I'm just going to completely trust God. I wrote out little highlights that I wanted to do, that I, well, that I felt like God wanted me to do and, and things like that. And then it was just... It was just a matter of, you just got to go for it. You either do it or you don't. And obviously, it turned into what it was with no intention of taking as much time as I did. And just for an update on this Sunday, I'm going to stick to the to the clock. I know a lot of people think I'm going to ignore that or go over, but... I mean, I enjoyed it. I thought it was... No, it was great. It didn't feel that long to me, but... When you engage. Then. Um, but I, I don't, I don't want to take up that much. That's just too much time. So... But what notes, what, what do you, what little what? notes do you want to talk about for tonight? Because so, I'll take you over here and then you're not going to be able to see what you Oh, we, I mean, we can go wherever, but um, no, it was just the, the importance of just staying committed and, and being a renewal. And it felt like it was like a, just a wake up call for uh, America and for Christians. And it was just like... It was just like, hey, this is this is the reality of the situation that we are in. I know it's, and it's not, and the hard thing is trying to deliver your heart with like, because you guys know how I am with the lost. Always just, want, I want to do everything we can, I can to reach the lost. Mm-hmm. And it's just so easy in America because we've got, you know, comfortable buildings and we don't have anybody breathing down our neck trying to kill us and we've got air conditioning and all this stuff and and we just it's so easy we just get complacent and then we just start going through the motions and it's like y'all we've got to wake up and realize Christianity is all but dead on the other side of the world where it began and it's coming over here it's already kind of started here and if we don't like pick up and start doing what Jesus told us to do yeah we're going to be in one heck of a mess. Well, like to me, I was sitting up there and I was thinking, um, you know, I feel a lot of, uh, I have a hard time sometimes, you know, I'm always around you and your dad, you know, and then like your mom too, but you know, not because she goes to the salon and stuff, but like I'm always around you guys and it gets hard sometimes because, you know, and we're always around each other. And it gets hard because it's, I feel inferior a lot because, um, you know, you can just, you know, study and I get jealous sometimes because (laughs) I, I I mean, I do because it just, um, I don't know, it's hard. You feel like inferior and when you were preaching about it, it really made me think you know, you gotta, you gotta say more of like what you said about this isn't Christianity, you know, this isn't, um, you know, singing the songs because sometimes, and I've said this before, like you feel like it's a, a checklist. Um, you feel like it's a checklist sometimes and it's harder for different personality people because I'm very, I am a, it's, I feel like I am a people pleaser sometimes and to me like I okay I got to interrupt my story now. So so the the I left church on Sunday. 
I left her, and this will kind of explain like my personality. And I, I didn't want to bring this up, but I think it's kind of funny. And it's a, and I, t- you know, obviously, you know, what happened on the way home. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you you talked about all this and blah 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 blah. And this is what happens every time you go out and you like charge forward and you do this like awesome sermon. Something bad happens to me. Like I don't know what it is. Like stop it's an it. Attack. So. Uh, I haven't gotten pulled over since I was about 16. I don't have a single speeding ticket. I don't have a car. Like, I don't have, you know, and I avoid cops at all. I just scare, the, they, they scare me so bad, you know. And I get very nervous, and I just, I don't want to be doing anything wrong. So, uh, why are you moving I'm that? Just <laughs> no, I'm just adjusting. <laughs> You're trying to mute me. No. Um, literally on the way home, I have my cruise control. It's in the the 65 mile an hour speed limit. I have my cruise control set at 64. I'm going under the speed limit. I'm just driving in the right lane. I wasn't even in the chilling in the left lane. I'm in the right lane, and there's a cop in the median close to our house, and he just goes and pulls me over. Riley's in the back seat. What's going on? I get pulled over on the church property, like on the new church property. You think that was coincidence? Right across from our house. And I'm like, wow. And all I can think of is, you know, mom lives out there with us and she's looking out, seeing cop lights and oh my goodness. So I immediately texted her. Sorry, mom, I know you're watching. And I immediately texted her. I got pulled over and da, 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 it's fine, you know. And um, he pulled me over for 10, which very random. It's not uh, random. He didn't give me a ticket. He just gave me a warning. He was nice. Jared, don't say anything. Uh, and... I was so upset and distraught because I got in trouble. But you didn't. And I, I went home and I t- had a brave face on for Riley because I didn't want her thinking that, you know, you cry every time you see cops. But as soon as she was playing <laughs> with the kitten in the bedroom, I was just, <gasps> and I called you and I'm like, <laughs> I got to take all my tent off. And you're like, we're not doing a thing. We're leaving it on there. I did. <laughs> I hurt my voice. But my point is, back to my original story, shut up, my, <laughs> back to my original story was, I hate getting in trouble. So I will do things so that I'm not getting in trouble. I will do things, you know, mm-hmm. that I'm supposed to do so that I don't get in trouble. And so a lot of times with this Christianity, when you have people that are like me, where uh, you do things just so you don't get in trouble, Bro. <laughs> <laughs> the laughing face. Um, yeah, I talked I, I talk to Tawny, too. I was so upset. She's like, you, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. Um, I will do things so that I don't get in trouble. So then Christianity turns into kind of a checklist for me. You know, put on, I'm, I'm doing the worship songs. Uh, I like them. I love them. I really don't have a desire to listen to anything else. Um You know, I'm doing my devotionals every morning, um, doing everything that I'm supposed to do. So then when you were talking about it and you were saying, you know, listening to me, coming to church, listening to a sermon is not Christianity. You know, listening to music, that's not Christianity. You know, uh, doing this, that's not it. You know, listening to, you know, your dad, that's not it. And it really wakes you up because... You wonder just how many people, and it really affected me. It affected me so much that I just, I'm really starting to think about it. Jer Bear. Oh, he knows your nickname. Get to the point. (laughs) So um, it kind of made me a little upset because how many people are like me that don't go to this church or don't have a pastor that's saying those type of things? Um, You know, how shocked are they going to be? When they, when they do die and they're like, I literally thought I was doing everything else. And they were just completely naive about it. Um, I don't know if that's possible, but it's... Well, the... Um, it, oh, man, it, it I can't just, remember. I think it's Ezekiel. And Ezekiel and Jeremiah... My other thought was, sorry, was if they're actually like studying and reading the Bible, because I'll, I'll be the first one to admit... Like, I haven't actually studied the Bible. You know, I can recite verses, but that's because I was raised at church. You know what I mean? And um, I can tell you every Bible story. Well, maybe not everyone. Don't 
don't actually try me on that. But, um, you know, if they're actually studying the Bible, then they're not going to have that spot because they're going to know that they have to have an actual... Well, that's the thing is... Relationship. You've and got... That's not the checklist. I mean, there's, there's, there's people that uh, read the Bible... Like, there's literally atheists, they'll read the Bible, and they're never going to understand it. Because their hearts aren't set on seeking the truth, on seeking God. The Bible talks about how, um, you know, they, they, they hear the word, but they don't understand the word. They're, mm-hmm. they're blinded by Satan. And by that, they'll, I mean, they can know the Bible, but they don't know the Bible. And um, yeah, Mitch, actually, since he's watching, he had a good thing at, moose. at the at moose. the men's um, taco thing moose and about bear. how, um, you know, like a lot of people, they know the playbook, like sports-wise, they know the playbook, but if you don't know the coach, you're not really going to know what to do. You can know all the plays, mm. but if you don't have a relationship with the coach, you know what I'm saying? So it's like we get into this thing of like that and not like picking on you, but just in general as people like you can read the Bible, you can know a lot of verses and recite it, but until you uh, are truly setting your heart on following Jesus and wanting to know Jesus and having a relationship with Jesus and application. Bit. Well, that's not but that's my just intention. My, whenever I used to remember when you and your dad started talking about the rapture and yeah. everything in the very beginning, um, I would, I would panic. Like it would scare me. I would panic because well, that's probably like, an effect of the type of church environment that you grew up in where it was mm-hmm. the hellfire and brimstone, you know, like if you're not right, you're, you're going to hell. Well, and I would, I would like, literally panic. I would just be, and I still have sometimes those thoughts of like, am I actually like, oh my gosh, like, am even. I doing, huh? Nothing. He's messing with you. <sighs> I hate this. I'm never coming back on this thing. <laughs> I'll just be doing it by myself. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I would panic, absolutely panic on when you, and I hated listening to you two talk about it. I would, I would leave the room because I just would just ah, panic. There's nothing to, uh, oh, look at that. Mitch was praying for me to, to preach a good Cheers. one, but there, there's no, and that honestly, that's probably another type of attack from the enemy trying to get you to question your, your, uh, salvation, you know, get you to fear. I mean, God, he doesn't give us a spirit of fear. So there's really, we, we literally have nothing to fear in this. And I know that's like easy to say, and we still get afraid at times. Easy but it, for you. There's people that, I'm just a psychopath, but oh, you know, there's like, <laughs> there's the, like that, like, oh, I'm afraid to die because I don't know. And it's like, dude, it's not, I mean, you know, your heart, God knows our hearts. And that's, you get all these people that are, that's one of, so one of my gripes, and I think I brought it up Sunday and I didn't dig too much into it, but like the whole thing that pops up a lot on reels about how uh, his name wasn't Jesus, the letter J wasn't invented until, you know, the 1500s. Do you really think that matters right now? Well, that's what I'm saying. You so know? my thing is, okay, yes, really like matter? his name wasn't Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's the English version of what his name was. The other side of that is, do you think God, when we all die, you think God is going to be like, hey, y'all had his name right. I know all of your hearts were in the right place mm-hmm. and you were seeking me and you loved me and you were serving me with all that you had and all that was great. But hey, you got his name wrong. So I'm sorry, you're all going to hell. Like, what do we, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just dumb. There's all these people Brooke that are something. misleading all these people with just this crap. Brooke, take, well, Brooke and I were talking today and she, she and I were talking about something and she said that people love to look at the things and not the heart. Exactly. And I think that, and then it's funny because it's like Jesus looks at the heart and not things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, I don't know where I was going with that. But <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. Man always looks on the outward appearance. We look at, and that's, you know, one of, I think I mentioned it Sunday, but that's one of my biggest pet peeves that drives me absolutely up a wall is people take their preferences for church, their preferences for uh, the, their Bible translation, their preferences for a pastor, their preferences for their, their worship music, their preferences for their clothing. They take all of that 
And they literally make an idol out of it. And it's like, if you're not reading the King James or the New King James, and you're not singing hymns, and you're not, you know, ladies, you, you, you can't wear pants, and you can't do this, and you can't, you know what I'm saying? Like those kind of church, and they make like this idol out of literally just their preferences. Well, it's funny. And they me. just it, shun you if you don't follow their box. And yeah. it's like, y'all don't realize, like, you're making an idol of your preferences instead of realizing well, they're controlling people us. worship God in different ways. I think it's I think it's a lot of control out of fear, you know? Yeah. I and like it's... that, like, I mean, you think different, different parts of the world are different cultures. They're all going to be writing and singing and playing worship music that sounds completely different. Like, you think, just like in Africa, with the, the type of music that they play over there, you think they don't write worship music that sounds, you know, that comes and sounds like African culture, but then they're doing it to worship God. Like, he, he made us to create Mm-hmm. He's pleased with, as long as it's worshiping him mm-hmm. out of your heart, it doesn't matter if it's heavy metal or hymns or whatever it is, it's all pleasing to him. It's all worship. But so many people, just because they have a preference, they just, they'll shun you and attack you. I mean, you remember like the guy that came after me for wearing t-shirts, yeah. like dude, like Jesus literally, and the same thing the, the they brought that girl, the woman in naked and he met all of these other people with, with I mean, that, you know, like he sat down with sinners. He touched lepers to heal them. It's, God doesn't care about that stuff. It's us. We're his children. You think about your kids. Like if they came up, you know, muddy or whatever and all that, you might not want it on your clothes. Yeah, but it's like you still love your kid and you're still going to go out of your way to help your kid. And that's how God views us. And it's just people have just this huge idol propped up from their preferences. And it's like, man, we got we to gotta strike this stuff down. Like Jehoshaphat in the story, like we got to tear these idols down and get back to just the gospel, loving Jesus, following Jesus, having a relationship with Jesus. And instead we want to just fight over everything, fight over denominations, fight over titles, fight over songs, fight over sermon delivery. And it's just like, man, we're missing the point so bad. What? You got nothing? No, I was, oh, I was just, handing I'm, it off to you. I was thinking. But um I'm not like your dad. I don't have like fifty thousand. Yeah, no, that exactly. Man's law, Bible. not God's law. That's like the Pharisees. So they took the Pharisees, that's a perfect example. You know, they took they took the law and then they put a fence around it and they made their own law trying to make sure that it's almost like they were trying so you know, there was God's law. And that they wanted to follow it, but instead of getting close to breaking God's law, they put this extra law around it. And eventually, like just for instance with the Sabbath, it became so cumbersome to just observe the Sabbath that it was just it was just ridiculous. And it's just that it's man-made, the laws and traditions. That's why you see people so many de- times now, like our age group and the younger age group that's like... I don't want any of that religion. They think Christianity is a religion. It's like no, we're we're a relationship because they've had the the uh, they've been exposed to just the tradition kind of stuff, and they're like, well, I don't want up, that. Growing up, like zodiac signs were huge yeah. when we were little, um, and I really didn't think anything of it uh, until like last couple years when you talk. Well, I'm not gonna lie, probably like the last year. I didn't ever, I wasn't like that type of girly where it was, no. oh, what's your sign? Um, but it, it, we had talked to the girls about it, you know, and, it, and they get into this, they think they have to, uh, I won't go off on that road, but um, where do you think that these traditions started? Like, do you think this is since the beginning of time? Well, look at that. I mean, look was- at just like what I was talking about with like the Pharisees, Pharisees and stuff. It's just we get one thing going and then we start adding in our preferences, which not that there's anything wrong with your mm-hmm. preferences. Like, okay, you know, maybe someone doesn't like contemporary worship music and they only like hymns. That's okay. That's totally fine. That's your preference. Yeah. But the problem is they think it has to be that. Mm-hmm. So like good example... Uh, one of my, I love, you know, I love Rattle. It's my favorite song. And I always go on YouTube and there's uh, a version where they did it at a praise party in 2020 and they're like going nuts, like just giving it their all, Mm -hmm. just expressive worship. It's beautiful. It's awesome to watch. Like they're just giving God their all. And it's awesome. My favorite version to watch. And one of the comments 
And I know I tell people don't read the comments, but you know, I always do. You always read whatever. the comments. And Mitch is the same, so I found somebody else the same like me. But there's someone in there, and they were like, imagine, they're like, this is how I imagine the praise party is every day in heaven. And, and, had and of course, somebody's like, how could you think this is worship type of thing? Really and it's like, sniffing into the... you're fine. They're not going to hear you if you put it a little away. Uh, and it's just that, like, it's, it, it might be your preference. You don't like that kind of mu- w- music, which is crazy too, because then they'll, they'll want to well, listen to hymns is, in church, are, but then they'll go out know, and they'll listen to ACDC and stuff. How do you know what it's going to be like in heaven? How well, do you why know? did God give us all of these different like, personalities and cultures we have people that ran, we like, write music in our style? Like, oh, by the way, they you know, only had like, elevation in heaven. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> it's it's all pleasing. To, if it's worship to God, it yeah. doesn't matter what it sounds like. It's pleasing to Him. Mm-hmm. It's pleasing to Him. I mean, we can literally, if we don't know the words to pray, the Holy Spirit will let us groan. And you just, you know, like if you're just in so much anguish and you're just like, ugh, like weeping and wailing, and that can be a prayer. And the Holy Spirit knows what you're dealing with and he takes that to God. So it's like, it doesn't matter what it sounds like if it's worship to God. Mm. The problem is people, I mean, it's everything in life. That's why I made the comment, you know, like we want, we want a hierarchy. We want levels. That's why we put levels to sin. And I made the point like... It, if you're a liar, you're on the same playing field as a, a you murderer. Got me on that one. It's rough you and got it's me not on that fun, one. but it, like, it's true. Sin is a is an even playing field. But since yeah. the dawn of time, we've always wanted to be like, oh, okay, well, we're doing this. This isn't as bad as this. We're doing this, but this isn't as bad as this. And it's like it's all sin. Sin is sin. Yeah. That's it. And but people don't like that because it challenges you. People don't want to be challenged. We want to be comfortable. We want to be complacent. We want to do just the bare minimum and think that's enough. And then, and then it, a lot of people, they just don't grasp the reality is that if you didn't have anything else but Jesus, that's enough. That's If you lost everything and all you had was Jesus, that has to be... <laughs> That has to be enough for you because that's what it is. It's him above everything and everything else falls into place when you live that way. But it's just, we want to make levels and we want to make it, you know, like, oh, well, I'm not doing that. You know, well, you know, look at them. You know, they're out there killing babies and stuff. And it's like, well, you're sitting here gossiping about them. And that's as much of a sin to God as the other stuff. And what God really hates is division in the body. And that's what I, that's why I keep picking this bone because I'm tired of the division in the body. I'm tired of just people that, the infighting within the body of Christ, like, you know, oh, I'm, I only want it this way. And then they start talking about this person and they start talking, and then it's everybody's divided. And it's like, we have enough division in the world. We're supposed to be united in one body. We're all we're all working for the same boss. We're all working for God. We're just and in I different think, styles and departments. And the biggest thing, too, you know, if, if, if someone doesn't like how you preach, I mean... That's great. That's, that's why we have other churches on the website. That's awesome. You know, don't, please don't stay. You know, please, please don't stay. Because what you're going to do is you're going to create this environment that's so toxic and it's, you know, I've seen the picture of the strawberry rotting next to, it's like this. Oh, like how it only takes one and then it spreads. It yeah. takes one and then it's spread. I mean, and it's, you know, go away. And, I, and I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, if, if you don't like me or you don't agree with us or you well, not don't agree with us, that sounds really wrong. But I mean, like, if they don't like how you preach, they don't like the music we sing, like, that's fine. You don't have to stay. You no. know, it's like, it, why would you stay other than you just want to make other people miserable? And that's where a lot of church hurt comes from. Yeah. Someone new coming in and they hear you talking, you know, you can just be talking, you know, let's just say for instance, and I'm not, I'm not thinking of anyone in my head and I'm not picking on anybody, but let's just say we have two people on a serving team together sitting out in the foyer and they're talking about me or talking about you. And they just came in, you know. Oh, yeah. They're gonna go like, oh, uh-uh. and, and God. So go. Hates go division. God hates out. division in yeah. the body, I mean, especially if you're talking about your leadership. Yeah. Like, ooh, that's that's just no. Go to the next church, and there will. I can tell you right now, your dad feels the same way. We would never, we would never be upset 
with that decision. If, hey, man, you know what? This just isn't, even if you're on a team. That's what the thing with preferences is. Even if you're on, if you're on a team, you know, hey, this isn't working out. Uh, I'm not really... I'm I'm not really feeling comfortable with the leadership moving forward. This isn't my style. That's fine. That's fine. I've that is perfectly served fine. in several churches. Please go because I do not want rotting fruit in here. No. But that's the thing like And it's not like we're just like, oh, we don't need you. It's like, no, I, I still love you. You're still a person, you're still a brother or sister in Christ. But if this isn't your style and this isn't your preference, that's why there's other churches. And as long as you are getting fed, that is the most important thing. So if this isn't for you, if here is not for you, as long as you're getting fed and it's somewhere that you like, that's what's important. But you need to make sure you're getting fed, not just going somewhere that makes you feel good. Because mm-hmm. faith is not about feelings. Yeah. Is is faith? It doesn't. Faith doesn't feel good sometimes, and you can't base it on your feelings. And I mean, that's the thing. That's just why there's different places, and and that's okay. But the problem is like that. Like they'll sit around and they'll get bitter, and then they'll stir up other bitterness and other resentment. It's like, dude, why can't we just be adults? If you don't like it, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Go find something else. But a, the problem is, is a lot of people. They will continually church hop and church hop and church hop because they're looking for the perfect church. Newsflash, there's no perfect church. This is not a perfect church. This might be your favorite church, but it's not perfect. We're going to get mad at each other sometimes. I'm going to say something that challenges you and it's probably going to make you mad. We're going to have a disagreement. The good thing is, and the important thing is, while we're not perfect, it is a healthy body. That's the thing. You're not going to find a perfect church. So you're just going to keep church shopping and church shopping, and then you're going to get, you're going to, get uh, to the point where you're just depressed and broken down and then cancel church altogether because you can't find the perfect church because something happens and you get upset and then you quit and you go to the next place hoping it's going to be better and then you get upset and you quit and you go to the next place. And it's like, no, you need, you need to just find a healthy body and serve in that body. And just like a family, like a husband and a wife, there will be moments of disagreement yeah. and some arguments and whatever, but healthy conversation, healthy conflict, and you work through it and you get past it and you just stay a part of the healthy body. That's the point. Like not not a perfect church because there is none. Yeah. We're all just... We're literally all humans trying to figure humans. it out and we're just doing our best. And but. we're going to get to heaven and realize we have all had so much stuff wrong. Yeah. You know, like we're doing our best. And we're going after God with, oh, with our best. didn't have elevation worship up there. No, <laughs> <laughs> and every, you know, we're kidding. chasing God. <laughs> I mean, you know, you think like, okay, God makes all of these musicians. I'm struggling over And he here, makes sorry. all of these, uh, <laughs> he so puts hard. words in people to write songs. Yeah. And you think when we get there, we're just, we're not going to use it. Like he gave us these gifts here. Right. He gave me the ability to play drums mm-hmm. here. But when I get to heaven, nothing. You think there's not going to be all of what well, You're going to have a drum battle, bro. Here. <laughs> One day, I got to retire one day. I'm never going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing. It's just, it, we, we, we've made an idol out of just preferences. And we've got to get out of that. We've got to get out of the, the division. Like, we've all got to realize we're on the same team. I love one of the guy that I'm listening to a lot lately. You, you, you it's not, it's not competition. <laughs> it's collaboration. Yeah. Collaboration, not competition. We should all be working together, Mm -hmm. even with other churches. I'm calling you guys out in St. Augustine. We should all be working together because I guarantee some of y'all are watching. Hit me up on Facebook. Let's work together to reach the lost. We should not be in competition trying to make sure we're putting the other church down the street out of business because like that, we've got how we do it here. Oh, come on. I've got how I preach here. Someone down the street. Give me an organ is not going to preach how I preach. They're not going to sound how I sound. They're not going to reach who I'm going to reach. But on, by extension, I'm not going to reach who they're going to reach. But if we can work together like we should be, because yeah. we're all on the same team, trying to reach the lost and realize, I'm not in competition with you. Our building's not going to fit everybody in St. Augustine. Mm-hmm. Your building's not going to fit everybody in St. Augustine. But we can work together and we can yeah. reach more people, probably by working together, than we would if we didn't work together. Yeah. 
And we just, I can't, I don't know, that's, that's a huge thing with me. I cannot stand division in the body. I can't. And I've, I've talked about it so much on here. Y'all know I get fired up, but it's like, I can't, I can't you do. You get fired no, up? No, I'm a gentle little. I've never know, seen it. Teddy bear. I just, I can't. It's stupid because it's a waste of time and energy. Right. And the people outside of the church are looking in going, this is exactly why I don't go to church. Yeah. They can't even get along. Why would I want to be a part of that? Yeah. And it's like, dude, we, we've got work to do. And if we're sitting here fighting each other, we're wasting our time. So what does a Sunday mean? What is that? What is this Sunday? Yeah. Are you, you being like dad trying to speak? No, I'm not, but my nose is running down my face. So, <laughs> and I'm okay. doing my absolute best. Um, well, so here's what I'm feeling this So if this I just go week. like this, we'll be good. Go ahead. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, Sunday, and I think I probably misspoke out of good intentions. Okay. I said four weeks. I don't, I don't know. I want to leave it open-ended because... Your dad right now is like, oh. I, well, no, I'm sure he's fine. He's looking to retire. My thing is, I went an hour and 48 minutes. I, okay. I don't want to do that. Okay. I, I mean, I loved it. I, f- I have never felt better than I have felt on Sunday. That was the most fulfilling thing, apart from our wedding day and the birth of our child. That was the most fulfilling thing to me. I, I was, you know, like, it was actually one of, like, the first time that I've just laid it all out and I wasn't like exhausted afterwards. I was just completely just like charged in energy. I felt so good. It was amazing. Yeah, but, I had to turn the music on to make you... Well, that's what I'm saying. I value people's time <laughs> like, and I don't want right. to take two hours <laughs> go. every time. Now, if we do like a revival night, baby, I'm going to go as long as oh, we want to go. That would be a really good but idea. But Sunday morning... Um, I have the hour clock back there, and I want I want to just stick to the hour clock, and I'll okay. preach, and then if it gets to an hour, I'm just gonna wrap it up, and that's why I'm saying I don't want to limit this now to four weeks. You heard it here first. If we're if we get to that, and I'm not done, we'll we'll bring it back up the next week. One hour. So this coming Sunday, we're doing uh, week two, episode two, whatever you want to call it, uh, of committed. It will be um, relapse. Chapter 18 of Second Chronicles. Okay. Um, and, and like that, I mean, I, I went almost, I, I went 45 minutes and I had turned around and I hadn't even really like preached my notes on the first verse. Did you not hit any, what did you not hit for Sunday? No, I, I, oh. I'm pretty sure I hit what I have written down, but I, it was so in me that I, I didn't need this. But I remember like I had just gone and gone and gone and I turned around and I was like, oh, there's 17 minutes on the clock and I'm nowhere because I hadn't gotten to like my first thing. Like if, I don't know if they could see that, but I, I was here and I was like, oh boy, I've got, you know, and it's not front and back. It oh, was and just TikTok has us banned thing. from live stream until September 1st. Yes. Guys, oh, so, so yeah. Um, yeah, we're really not going to be live on TikTok anymore. We're just going to do reels. <laughs> So I'm going to leave it open-ended. We're just going to walk through this series because I don't, I don't want to put a time frame on it and limit what God wants to do because clearly something was poured out and birthed Sunday. I, I, I fully believe that. I think Sunday changed a lot of things, not just for me and uh, not just for the ch- There's I don't, Something is being birthed. So I don't want to limit it to, I said four weeks and we're going to four weeks and I don't want to preach two hours and take up everyone's like, time. As a congregation, y'all get involved. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, the dialogue and the dance. It, it's like a worship back and forth. And, and like Brooke, like I didn't even notice I didn't sermon. notice it either. And I've gone back and watched it and yeah. it blessed me. And I was the one preaching it. Like I've gone back and watched it and I've cried through my own sermon. Like it's still feeding me. It made me tear up uh, several times and I don't. So, like your dad's sermons have never made me tear. <laughs> I'm just getting you back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tearing up from yawning. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, it definitely made me tear up a couple. And I don't even know why I was tearing up. Like I have no idea, but um, I was just, you know, felt it. Sad. What? As long as it was. Yeah, well, I like that. True revival doesn't have a time limit. We should, you know, we should schedule like a little. Uh, well, we have the praise party. We have in that, October, but we should but do just. I'll put it on the count. I, I, I will. I will pray about it, 
And I will wait and see what God wants to speak. And then well, I, I mean, think a revival, a revival night, night where it's just... It could literally be if you have something coming up and you're like, this would be perfect for it. We'll just yeah. do it for the next week. That's true. But yeah, so Sunday and the rest of the series, I plan on sticking to the, the time just to value everyone's time. And I, you know, and I know they're all, oh, I don't, I don't mind the length. I don't mind the length. But realistically... I don't. I just. I don't. I don't want to keep everyone that long. That's just something I I don't really want to do every Sunday, Mm -hmm. um, because eventually we're going to have to do two services, and I'm not going to be able to do that. that. And I don't want to have it to where, say, we had a nine o'clock and eleven. I don't want to limit nine, and then eleven. Like the eleven o'clock crowd gets way more fed because then you're going to have people that don't want to come to the nine. They want to come to the eleven, so they get the full, you know, outpouring kind of thing. So. I'm going to stick to the time, and, and if what? I'm not done, we'll bring it back up next week and continue on, and we'll just stay, we'll stay committed. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, Mitch. I just rolled my eyes again, Mitch. What you going to do but, about it? But, yeah, so um, if you guys want to get ahead, the full plan is this was uh, the first, I, I like calling it episode. Are you nervous? Because it's, no. Oh. Um, no, Sunday completely, and I, I told, I think I told you this, uh, and I told Dad this, but in true um, transparency for the family room, Sunday made me feel unlocked. It made me feel completely liberated to where... Like renewed? Re- yeah, renewed. Because um, <laughs> you've seen it, and I mean, you guys haven't really seen it, but me like preparing, a, you know, the whole week, like, oh, I got I to gotta write my sermon, I got to write my sermon, and now it's like I, I realize... I think I realize how God wants me to do it is just how it's been is he gives me, you've seen me, I'll bring out my phone and I write something down and he gives me these little pockets. Mm -hmm. And before, you know, I've gone with those and then written out. Poor planning, Amanda, poor planning. I've like preached it as I'm writing it out in my head and I'll write it out and then, you know, I get those information. But I think God just liberated me and he freed me and and to where I just, he's going to give me it throughout the week And I'll write that stuff down and come up here and it's just work it out from the heart kind of thing. What Uh, was your favorite quote of all your, if you can remember in your notes or anything, what was your favorite, what was your most impactful thing that was so? um, I I I think for, well, I've got two. I really liked. um, (laughs) Ah, Brooke. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Amanda. I, uh, I really liked um, the spiritual squatters thing. And I, I think I'm, I'm like almost positive that, that the Holy Spirit gave me that. Just, it, just spiritual squatters and the idea of what it was. I'm pretty sure I got that Sunday morning. For anyone that maybe didn't watch it, what would you be, what would be a... What was it? What would you, what would you say that that, uh, yeah, yes. So <laughs> it, it popped in my head because uh, uh-huh. I knew everything and I knew where I wanted to go. And just the rallying cry of like, we're, we're not really doing anything with mm-hmm. our Christianity. We just come to church and then it's like, for the rest of the right. week. So it popped in my head, spiritual squatters. You know, you think of squatters that they go into a house. Mm-hmm. They don't work for the house. They don't do anything for the house. They just, they just live in the house. They get the benefits of the shelter, mm-hmm. but they're contributing nothing to, and I hesitate to use the word earn it because obviously Christianity is not something we it's earn point based. and we don't work for it. Right. But I'm saying like, to me, spiritual squatters was just, we, we come in and we don't, we don't serve. We don't, we don't give, we don't tithe. We just do, you know, we come in Sunday, we get fed from the preacher and then we're not going to go back and listen to the sermon anymore. We're not even going to look at that passage that he spoke from. We're not going to feed on it for the rest of the week. We just come in. We want, you know, we want to get to heaven. We want Jesus to, you know, thank you for dying for my sins. And that's where it ends. We're just squatting in our salvation of, you know, not that we're earning things, but faith without works is dead. And so we're coming in and we're just spiritually squatting. We're not doing anything to contribute to the kingdom, but we want all of the blessing of God. We want his hand. We want his provision. We want his shelter, but we don't want to do anything to give back to him, if that makes sense. So that was one of my favorite things. And I got that like last minute. The other thing is I am... Well, you're a lot more secure. Like you think about it like military wise, um, your safest position is, well, not your safest, but one of the safe ones is when you're in the squat, like 
you're up, you know, they see me, I'm down. Yeah. When you're running across the field, you're not as safe when you're standing completely up doing things. You're safer when you're squatting. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So people feel more secure when they're... Oh, we think we have so much fear of man. You know, if I say this, they're going to mock me. If I say this, they're going to cancel me on my social media. If I say this, mm-hmm. I might lose my job. If I say this, I might make one of my family members mad, and then, you know, we're going to have a split family. And it's like, if you don't say yeah, but what it... what if you don't? That's what, I was, that's what I'm getting at. And I was, you know? to tie it back into earlier with Ezekiel, if he didn't warn people, mm-hmm. it was on, their blood is on, it was on his hands. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter if, and it's true for all of us, and speaking so much to me is that we're called to warn people in love, not like beating them over the head. Hey, you're going to hell. That's not our place. That's God's place. He's the judge. Mm-hmm. But we're called to warn people, and it's just, if I know you're living in sin and I don't say anything, your blood's on my hand. If I say it to you and you do nothing with it, that's fine. I've you done my part. Once. I've warned you. you I, I've, once, I've given you that seed, mm-hmm. and it's on you. It's kind of like you could be ignorant and you don't know. And I'm like, hey, here's what you need to do. It's on you now. And you're like, well, screw that. And nothing happens. Mm -hmm. That's on you. But if I don't say anything, it's on me. Mm -hmm. So you have to, we have to be telling people, hey, the lifestyle you're living in is not what's good for you. And... And even like, you know, you think of like just the world right now where they want, you know, oh, multiple partners and all this stuff. And it's like, how do you think people get STDs and that spreads? And then yeah. there's just all this strife and turmoil. And it's like, you don't realize the, 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 the boundaries that God puts around us to live as Christians is for our benefit. It's yes, to keep us safe. It's to keep us like just real and humble and just alive and not falling into things that literally are detrimental not just to our health but to our soul and you know and our morality and it's just that's the reason there are these boundaries but people think it's just rules and it's like it's not rules it's it's liberating Joel and said that demons have no gender messed her up wait, who did what Joel oh yeah demons yeah that was i mean you know we don't we don't think about that but it started clicking to me you hear it and it's like man they're they're non-binary and all, and all that my first thought was that's why there's this new push for yeah, yeah. exactly. Is that it's where all, you were going it's with all, that? Yeah, it's all okay. it's all demonic. That's why they are dealing with those things, yeah. and it's like we need to. And I and I don't want to, and I don't know who it was, and I don't want to call anybody out, but there were several things that I said, and people would like laugh, or I would bring up like uh, a musical artist, and I heard a couple comments. And it's like don't don't shun these people, don't kick them aside, and, and I get it. Like the music industry is dark. And there's a lot of Satanism in it, I and think it's just open. Just to like no, and I get it, and it's like, oh yeah, but it's like you can't. We can't write these people off. They're still people. They're still children of God. Mm-hmm. They're still your brothers and sisters. They're just not in Christ yet. So instead of writing them off, we literally need to be praying for them and trying to lead them to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And um, the other thing that you said, what was my favorite thing? Not just the spiritual squatters. But one of my favorite thing was um, the Matthew 16, 13 to to 19, going against the gates of hell. Um, I am big on the church should not be defensive. We should be able to make a defense of the faith. And that's actually one of the first reels, I think, was a clip on here of me saying that, of making a defense for the faith. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're supposed to be offensive. We're supposed to be on the offense. We're supposed to be literally just, I view it like storming the gates of hell and taking people back. Uh, cause the gates haven't been shut yet. And even though there's people there, I mean, obviously we can't help the people that have died already, but we can help the people that are living completely in hell. We can still help them. Until they die, there's still an opportunity to pull them back into the kingdom. And, you know, it's so easy to write these people off that are, I'm, I'm, I'm hurrying. I'm so sorry. Write these people off like that are I can't wait for all the jokes living completely in sin and write them off because they don't want anything with, to do with God. And it's so easy to just be like, all right, I'm washing my hands of you. But it's like, man, can you imagine the testimony mm-hmm. that these people would have? I mean, you think of like Kat Von D 
and I think Russell Brand and these people, the people that they can reach just because they converted. Can you imagine if God had Eminem on his side? Mm -hmm. How different and how many people would be led to Christ just because Eminem's life changed. Right. And that's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, man, if we could reach these people, there's so much that could be done. But we can't just be sitting in the church, you know, waiting and trying to be defensive and making the defense. Or the, we've got to literally be on the offense and taking back uh, the territory from, the, um, from Satan, the human lives. They're prisoners of war. We need to be literally actively praying for them, not writing them off, praying for them. And... I don't know, that's just my thing. Like, we should not just be defensive. We've got, to, we've got to stay burning for God and trying everything we can to reach the lost. And I think it was cool, too, this time that people really got to know how you are. Because you can come across very, you know. But, like, you really do love people a lot more than I do. <laughs> No, I know I have a, a, a very different personality and just dry, and I can come across. Uh, I think it was nice. Super that... insensitive, but it's just. <laughs> Ashley. Currently, well, anyone in Florida yeah. this heat. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. That's also, and that's just to wrap it up. That was the thing I put on Facebook of Ezekiel 3 8, that God made Ezekiel's personality to be just as unwielding and just as insensitive as the people that he was preaching to so that it wouldn't bother him and he wouldn't have any fear and he would keep preaching it. Man, I read that and I'm like, that's, that's yeah. me. Like, I just, it's not that I'm insensitive or trying to be insensitive, but it's just like, I, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care if you want to cancel me. I don't care what you want to say about me. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm going to preach this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it now how me, God leads me to say hand. it. Yeah, I, I just, I, I'm not going to fold. I if do not care. If you are mean care. to me, you will hurt my feelings. <laughs> no. And I will cry. And then yeah, I remember it was like, how many months trying to get you to turn the comments on TikTok so we oh could get it kicking gosh. and going? And I you're like, hate ah. mean people. I don't, you just, y'all, uh, you know, you can't look at it. That's why you got me. I can look at it and be like, oh, this is dumb. And then just keep going. But I'll think about it just for days. How I am, how, how God wired me, and it's it's a blessing and a curse. It's hard. Yeah. It makes it hard to have um, like relate to people with like empathy and things like that. But it's also a blessing because it's like I that part of my brain just it, you don't bother me. You don't bother me. And I this don't is care. Your pastor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It's Ezekiel. Go read Ezekiel, chapter three. That's how God made Ezekiel. It's just yeah. he's he's he's. This is God's word. This is what it is, period. I'm not afraid of you. I'm going to keep saying it. I don't care what you're going to do to me or say to me. I don't care if you're going to try to kill me. Right. I'm fearless. I have nothing to fear about man, just God. And with that, because my <laughs> wife's about to die over um, there. So I don't know. I took cold medicine, and the last, like, 30 minutes, I can just... <laughs> I'm trying so hard <laughs> to keep it together Struggling. and watch my face. Hey, the I good news is your eyes it. were open. Kind of. I feel like they're slowly <laughs> closing. But we'll get out of here. So Sunday, episode two, week please two. I like saying episode because series. Please yes, get please involved. get involved. Please get involved. I'm not talking about teams. Um, we had a lot of really great... That was disgusting. We had a lot of really great <laughs> feedback. I'm a nurse. I've seen a lot of stuff. We've had a lot of great feedback with like the teams, uh, people wanting to serve on teams. We have um, a hopeful electric guitar player. Uh, we've got someone who wants to jump on production. We have someone else. I forgot who it was. I don't know. There was a lot of people it was that a lot, came and up that's Sunday. That's really, really cool. Um, you know, just getting just doing something, involved. anything. And no, I'm saying like just when you're preaching, just like really getting into it. Oh, it yeah. really raises the level in the room. And it really like raises. Well, that's why I want an organ again, having something to back you. And it's not for the entertainment. It's just like I said, it's like it's like a dance. It's for sure and it's, a and it's and it's yeah. to me it's 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 both sides engaging in the worship of the proclamation of the gospel. Yeah. If that makes sense. It's not just like, oh, I want something to boost the the because some people say, Are you trying to stir the emotions? It's that's not it. To me it's because Diane, that she wants to do it, mm -hmm. and she was asking, and it's just like, you, you, to me, it's like yeah. the musicians behind you, when the people are clapping, 
That's them engaging in worship over the proclamation of the gospel. And as yeah. a musician, if you're on stage, you know, yeah, you can clap, but it's like if you're using your gift, that's another thing yeah. of worship. And it's just we're all engaging in this this dance and this worship of God and his word and like the proclamation of his word. It's just like it's not about stirring emotions. It's just everyone is involved in so that get, worship. Yeah, so get involved. I challenge you. And I don't speak out. And I've really tried you have been. to start being... Well, it's because I, and then sometimes I feel really bad for you when I can tell you're, you're like, oh, come on, guys. And I'm like, I'll do it. And I'm yelling. No, so for the back literally for behind the scenes, and I've said this before, when you're up here and no one is talking, and I know a lot of times it's like, it might be their processing. Yeah. But when it's quiet, you feel so utterly alone and you don't realize it's not in your head like, oh, they're processing. It's like, oh, man, this is not landing. Like, I don't know yeah. if they're getting this. Like, you know, yeah. so it's, I don't know. It sounds like you're, like, begging for people to give you attention, but it's like it just makes you feel so lonely. And well, you're like, you, I have no be, idea if this is right. How would it be if we did this and you talked the entire time and I stared at you? Terrible. Like, when I make a big point and then I stop. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not as smart as you. No, I was making, <laughs> making an example. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Sunday was great and I am, I mean, I've already made the Facebook post. I'm so excited to get to this Sunday and keep diving in. It's, uh, it's given me a whole new just lease on life and a whole new like outlook and love for the word. Just like diving in. Bring your friend. Tell them to come watch your crazy hyper pastor. Yeah. And I know this is, uh, I believe it's a, a holiday weekend. Um. Oh, Labor Day is Monday. Is that what it is? So I don't know. You know, I said th this type of preaching either fills the building or it uh, empties the building. And I don't know how Sunday will be because it's Labor Day weekend. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to still see it packed because it, I get, you know, three-day weekend, um, your eternity is much more important than a three-day weekend. And like I said, I, I plan to stick to the clock. Um, you know, maybe I'll still go over a little bit, fine. but I'm... I haven't done this for a year until September, yeah. so bear with me as I adjust and learn how to do things. And bear it like, I, I don't know, because I never get a chance to talk to people, so, you know, while we have it on here, you know, bear with us. We're 34 years old and... Whoa, whoa. Uh, the, okay. You're going to be 30? Okay. I'm not, <laughs> shut up. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're truly trying. Our heart is in this. I never thought I'd say that my heart would be in this because, <laughs> you know, but you know, we're, we've got our own family issues. We've got our own life going on where we're doing our best without this even being our, our life, you know, mm -hmm. and it's really difficult as a 30 year old to have your life so much under the microscope of hundreds of people and, you know, oh, she acts like that, you know, and he's preaching or, oh, you know, she's wearing that. And he's, it's, it's very hard. So I'm not asking for a pity party, but if people could just be patient, you know, patient and praying. we're trying really hard. And if I'm updating stuff like updating name badges or I'm updating connect cards, I'm not trying to get rid of old ways. I'm just trying to help. So, uh, with that being said, <laughs> what's up? You have anything to add? That was all I had. My nose is running really bad now. Okay. Well, with that, we'll <laughs> see you Sunday. Please invite people. Um, remember to share everything. Um, if you're on TikTok, get on our TikTok page, make comments on the videos. Nothing, none of this moves and gets moves. seen without positive engagement. Maybe don't share this one because I've been wiping my nose for the last That don't matter. <laughs> share Everything we ones. do. No, I'm serious share because sermons, I was looking at the ones. analytics and literally nothing we do on Facebook, on TikTok, on YouTube, and Instagram, nothing moves and nothing gets seen unless there is engagement. And that's not just watching it for 20 seconds. You have to literally watch it for, I think, at least 90 seconds. Just leave it on in the back background. When you go to bed, leave it on. Leave it on a playlist and playing. You don't have to share just our church. Like you know, it. Share, yeah, do it with other stuff. If you Bible see other verse, clips. Share, you don't have to do just But like that, stuff. like you got to you gotta like it, share it, make comments, yeah. or it literally, it just, it, it shuts down. And then it doesn't get out. And the reel that you did, 
the short that you did of this is not Christianity, mm -hmm. it's already almost 3,000 views on YouTube and it's already like 40 new subscribers. That's the importance of engagement and sharing it and liking it and putting comments. And literally, yeah. I mean, that's also taking part in sharing the gospel. So if yeah. you don't know what to, say. what to say to someone, just grab a clip make a comment and share it on your Facebook and just be like, hey, this is great. You know, it's speaking to me. Take a listen, whatever. Just something simple. And that's still planting a seed in someone's life that's still helping us yep. as a church reach the lost. Uh, and with that, let's wrap this up. Sorry. Again, we already went way over time. Um, oh, it's okay if you do it. We do it every time on here. Um, but with that, Sunday, we start at 10. Come early. Please invite... <laughs> Invite five people. I'm challenging you. I gave a challenge Sunday to do something. I'm inviting everyone on the family room. Next invite at here. least five people. I won't be wiping my nose. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And we will see you next Wednesday. Remember, at 630, not 6. Uh, we'll see you Sunday. We'll see you Sunday. And with that, you guys have a great rest of the week. Goodbye. <laughs> Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the honor arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.